Hello everyone, I am so excited for this video today. I know I promised this a couple weeks ago, but it's been a little hectic, but it's here now. So every 10 years, astronomers get really excited about something called a decadal survey. And the one for this decade, 2020, we're a little delayed thanks to the pandemic, just came out this month. We're going to go over this one, but first, what the hell is a decadal survey anyway? Well, basically, these really big telescopes and observatories take a lot of time and money. And so a decadal survey allows the community to come together and kind of make priorities that will help us enable long range planning to make the best use of all of these resources. This is a really long process that has been going on for the past couple years, entailing hundreds of white papers written by scientists all over the world. These were the numbers of white papers that were received. 13 different committees and an overall steering committee. And in fact, sub communities sometimes do their own decadal surveys to submit as feedback for the larger community decadal survey. I know Exoplanets does that. So the decadal survey is just kind of this summary of what the community thinks should be prioritized. But it's important to note that the decadal survey is just a recommendation. It's often used to guide decision making at NASA and other institutions, but is produced by a private entity and it is not authoritative and it's not binding. The committee does, however, receive budget guidance from NASA, DOE, and NSF in order to help guide these recommendations to make them actually useful. The report itself is published by the National Research Council of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, which is a private nonprofit. The astronomy and astrophysics decadal dates back to 1964, when ground-based astronomy, a 10-year program, was released. Since then, we've had decadal surveys for the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and now 2020. Our latest decadal survey is officially named Pathways to Discoveries in Astronomy and Astrophysics in the 2020s, but you'll most hear, commonly hear it called Astro 2020. Some previous top recommendations from past decadal surveys include the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, which is scheduled to launch next month, finally, and some big observatories like the um, Chandra X-ray Observatory, the Spitzer Space Telescope, or the Very Large Array. Okay, all this context is well and good, but let's get to the good stuff. What is in the dang thing? Well, it's actually available for free as a PDF for you to read if you like, but it is over 600 pages, so maybe not a little bit of light reading. <laughs> Let me give you a rundown. So here's an overview. You want to identify the foundations and principles that support space and ground-based observatories that enable us to explore the cosmos. There were three main science themes of the report, each with its own priority area. There was world and suns in context, with the priority area of pathways to habitable worlds. There was new messengers and physics, with a priority area of new windows on the dynamic universe, and cosmic ecosystems with a priority area of unveiling the drivers of galaxy growth. All three of these science themes require high capability observatories across many wavelengths of light. Now going into the decadal, one of the kind of preparation things was developing proposals for four main observatories, Louvoir, Habex, Lynx, and Origins. And one highly anticipated outcome of the decadal survey was basically which of these observatories would be kind of be crowned as the next flagship, the next Hubble, the next JWST. And it turns out that the answer is none of them. <laughs> Not exactly anyway. The actual recommended flagship is somewhere in between Louvoir and Habex. So since the committee didn't choose one of these existing mission concepts, there isn't like a, a cool name for it, but just the highest priority mission that they identified is a large telescope with coverage of the UV, optical, and infrared wavelengths. The aperture of this telescope was recommended to be 6 meters. For comparison, Hubble's aperture is about 2.4 meters and JWST is about 6.5. And, and the telescope is recommended to be optimized for observing habitable exoplanets with the goal of obtaining a robust sample of about 25 spectra of potentially habitable exoplanets. This makes me so happy, both as an exoplanet scientist and as a general human who wants to know if we are alone out there and just questions about life and how it exists in the universe. But this telescope would also provide a lot of the desired capacity for general astrophysics and addressing these other science themes. The estimated cost of this mission is identified as $11 billion with the goal of launching sometime in the 2040s. This is a really ambitious recommendation and I really hope NASA picks it up. Now after this high priority mission, there are two other missions recommended with equal priority, a far infrared spectroscopy and or imaging mission, and a high spatial and spectral resolution X-ray mission. Each of these co-equal priority missions has a price tag of about $3 to $5 billion. The Decadal also recommended creating an entirely new class of astronomy missions. Right now, astronomy has Explorer class missions, which are about a couple hundred million in budget, and these large flagship missions that are several billion, like Hubble or the proposed one from this Decadal. 
Now, planetary science, which I should mention, planetary science has their own decadal survey. So basically anything solar system centric is not going to be included in the astronomy and astrophysics decadal. And planetary science does have a kind of mid-range mission class that's had a lot of success. This is the New Frontiers mission class that brought us New Horizons, Juno, OSIRIS-REx, and the upcoming Dragonfly mission. So Astro 2020 says, hey, we should do a similar thing for astronomy, aiming to have about one per decade with a max budget of one and a half billion dollars. The Decadal Survey also looks at our current programs and makes recommendations about those. Now, for the most part, they, can, they recommended continuing in support for missions like the Roman Space Telescope, the Vera Rubin Observatory, and various international collaborations. However, they did recommend that SOFIA be discontinued as the scientific return is not commensurate with the cost of the mission. The survey also emphasized the importance of time domain astronomy. So this is astronomy looking at things and how they change on short time scales rather than kind of traditional astronomy, which is looking at more of a steady state type object. So they recommended a program to find and follow up these transient events that change over time, including very crucially multi-messenger follow-ups for gravitational wave detection events. So that's on the space side. Looking over at ground-based astronomy, the survey recommended that the U.S. government invest heavily in upcoming very large telescope observatories. There are currently two of these extremely large ground-based observatories in development, the TMT, or the 30-meter telescope, and the GMT, or the Giant Magellan Telescope. Federal funding for these telescopes and for time on these telescopes will help allow a wide range of astronomers access to observing time from lots of different institutions onto these really exciting upcoming observatories. And this was identified as the top priority for NSF major research facilities. Other recommended major research facilities included the Cosmic Microwave Background Stage 4, CMBS4, and the Next Generation Very Large Array, NGVLA. We're really great at naming things. And similar to the recommendation for mid-scale NASA programs, the survey also recommends that the NSF um, increase funding for its mid-range programs of about five to hundred million dollar range. <sighs> Okay, that was honestly just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much exciting stuff going on in astronomy and astrophysics right now, and these recommendations are just really exciting. <laughs> Here's a roadmap of upcoming projects in the coming decades that support the priorities of these science areas. And keep in mind, planetary science is not included in this. They have their own. And none of these really amazing missions and facilities will do a lick of good without really excellent scientists to operate them and use them. So the survey also takes a look at the community and at the profession. So the guiding principles identified for the profession in the survey are diversity, equitable access, benefits to the nation and world, sustainability, and accountability. Some of the many recommendations related to the state of the profession are to collect better data to understand equity and funding, invest in bridge programs that can increase diversity in the field, and a 30% increase in NSF individual research grant funding to restore success rates. Phew, okay. Honestly, y'all, I feel like I barely even touched on everything in this report, but this is already kind of a long mess of a video, so <laughs> I hope you got a little bit excited about all of the amazing things that are to come in astronomy and astrophysics, and just what the future holds and what we're going to continue to learn. I mean, exo-earth, <laughs> is it 2040 yet? <laughs> If you're curious, I promise there's a lot more to cover in this survey, so you can go ahead and play around with this interactive report on the National Academy's website. Or of course, if you've got some spare time, there's 600 pages to read. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching and joining me. I hope I will see you again very soon. In the meantime, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye!